Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast featuring Roger Drummer, the formulator at HerbWorks.com. An educator in the field of nutrition and Chinese herbalism, Roger has a unique ability to keep things simple by taking all the guesswork out of complicated health issues. HerbWorks is committed to helping you improve your health and enhance your life through herbs and common sense. Welcome to the HerbWorks Podcast. I'm Laura Shakti. And Roger Drummer. All right, Mr. Drummer, what are we talking about today? Tumbling toward total idiocy. (laughs) Total idiocy. I I think our listeners might want a better explanation of that. There's a lot of truth to it, and, and I'm really just responding to the latest research that has come out that shows that every generation is dumber than the last one. Every generation where, like... Worldwide. Worldwide. They've been doing studies. There are studies in Britain. Two um, scientists from Norway have been studying. They actually studied a total of 730,000 men. So maybe it's only half the the population. (laughs) And then, but basically they found that seven points of IQ have gone down per generation. And then the British study showed that every 10 years, every decade, the average IQ has gone down 2.5 to 4.3 points. All right, so that's a lot of mathematical information. What do you think it means? What it means, in my opinion, is that all the different aspects of modern living, things that have happened since, let's just say, the 60s, Mm-hmm. Because that's when a lot of manufacturing processes took hold in America and a lot of things changed as far mm-hmm. as lifestyles. And then the 70s hit and we had a complete change of diet all over the world that we thought was good for heart disease. And then it's just the big business took over how everything's done in America, which means, as far as agriculture, a lot of chemicals. We got caught up in this whole idea of protecting our teeth by dumping toxic metals in our water system. All these things come together, and each one of them has their own unique way of disrupting brain function. And somebody was asleep at the wheel because nobody was paying attention to all these things happening. So you think that environmental toxins could be a very large reason that we are becoming dumber? I think it plays a role. It plays a huge part in it. I think this whole, everybody remembers about, oh gosh, what was it? 10, 15 years ago, there was this theory that there was some conspiracy to dumb down America. Why? Well, I, I don't think anybody's been trying on purpose, but we're doing <laughs> it anyway. And basically it's this, just all these things coming to a, like one big cluster Mm -hmm. of what's going on with the average person in the world and they're all just exposed to so many things that they don't know anything about and that again somebody's asleep at the wheel because somebody is supposed to be regulating these things and it's not happening so our environment is not being regulated and we're talking about simple things that we encounter every day just living in our houses just living in your houses drinking tap water Look at fluoride. The World Health Organization declared this year that fluoride is a known neurotoxin, meaning that it disrupts how your nervous system is formed. So now think about how if everybody in America is drinking tap water and they're drinking fluoride every single day and maybe they're going to conceive and have a child, that child's going to be exposed to fluoride through every process of its growth from Mm -hmm. the little egg until the human being. The entire development, development. especially that last trimester where the brain's developing, it's going to be exposed to fluoride. So it's going to be exposed to a chemical every single day that impedes how its nervous system forms its spinal cord, its brain, and the rest of the nerves. Right, yeah. So that's just something simple, like your tap water. That's just something simple right. like your tap water. Now, maybe your your parent, your mother has mercury fillings in her teeth. They're ex- being exposed to mercury at the same time, which does the exact same thing as fluoride does. Right. So, I mean, not to be doom and gloom, but that's most people can't escape the fact that their city water is chlorinated, that their city water is 
it has fluoride. I mean, in Las Vegas, we've got radiation in our water. Yeah, you can escape it, but you have to be, you have to know it's there. Well, and then okay, you just so... make a decision to buy a simple filtration unit and do something about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are options that you can take to protect yourself from that. I live in Vegas, and so I do a special thing with my water so that I'm not drinking the three radioactive chemicals <laughs> that are in the water in Vegas. Right. Plus the fluoride and everything else that they add to it. Right, right. And so there's things you can do, but then there's also then the pesticides. You know, most pesticides interrupt acetylcholine in your brain, which is the neurotransmitter responsible for how you lay down memories, how you retrieve memories, how fast your brain actually works. Um, But people are exposed to so many pesticides. Right. Well, you talk a lot about the importance of buying organic foods. And we've talked about the importance of having clean water as best you can, buying the highest grade filter that you can buy, putting it in your house. And you have you have a list that you love people to uh, pay attention to, too. What is it? Your green, clean, clean, 100? What is it called? Oh, Your no, list. that's the environmental work. Right, yeah, you love that you, list. tell you there's yeah. a, the Dirty Dozen, which is the that most pesticides okay. on foods, and then the Clean 15, which okay. is the clean ones 15. that hardly ever have pesticides. So the information's out there, yet the average person in this country, I know in particular, is not educated at all about food or how to take care of themselves. Well, that's your job. Let's do it today. I know. I try to do that, but I I don't, (laughs) I haven't reached every single human being in America yet. And so this idea that we, we live in a country where we put so little effort into educating people about simple things. You remember, you know, reading this study, it reminded me of when we had our first child. and we 22 went, years ago, Mr. We went through the Bradley method, mm-hmm. which is a birthing method. And they taught us something about brain function while we were doing that class. Mm-hmm. And so what we learned was on the last trimester that you have to eat a high-protein diet because that's the three months that your baby's brain is growing. And when that brain grows the last three months, it becomes the heaviest part of their body. That turns them upside down, so they come out the chute really the easy. The chute. Thank you, dear. When That's you have, quite eloquent. eloquent. When you have Fabulous. a baby, right? So... If you don't do that, that's when you have these breech births where they, mm-hmm. they're having all these problems because a lot of times kids that are born on a heavy carbohydrate diet tend to be bigger, spongier, and harder to move down the chute. Well, the chute. You are really <laughs> eloquent today. Oh, my word. This podcast is brought to you by Riverworks, specializing in stress and brain essentials. Check out Roger's other articles and videos at HerbWorks.com. While you're there, take a look at our natural herbal-based product line for energy, stress, immunity, and sleep. Now back to Roger. All right, so not all breech babies are because the mother didn't eat enough protein, but it is true that part of the process of developmentally when the baby turns upside down has to do with the mother's nutrition and the level of um, protein and that brain, as you said, being heavy right, enough but to now, rotate now the baby. That's a very simple um, piece of knowledge that we didn't know at the time, right? Mm-hmm. We were, in we the were pretty field. educated in the health So yes. I doubt if that's actually told to anybody that goes in to see their gynecologist and is having a baby. I doubt if anybody knows that. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't even know that your your tap water that you're drinking when you're pregnant, that the fluoride and everything in there is going through to your baby too. Yeah, and so, so, so there's just such a lack of awareness in this country about basic things to do for your own health. And now it's becoming so bad because, you know, nothing's gotten cleaner in the last 40 years. <laughs> I mean, there's more pesticides now. Uh, they have this new thing with glycophosphate, which has been determined to be the number one used pesticide in America now. And now they've decided to spray wheat fields with it before they harvest it just to make them drier. Mm-hmm. So now people eating non-organic wheat not only might be having a digestive issue due to um, the fact that they have a gluten sensitivity, but the fact that it's just been sprayed with pesticide three weeks before it was harvested to make it drier. All right, so if you don't want to be part of the dumbing down of America, you want people to definitely be drinking clean water, 
no pesticides in the food or avoid them, right? Right. Organic food. What else? Then you have to pay attention to basic nutrition. I remember when we were back, gosh, when we were having our first child again, it was 22 years ago. It was right then that this whole idea of giving mothers DHA during pregnancy, that it might influence the IQ of your baby by five to 10 points. Mm. Now, I listened to that today and it makes total sense to me, right? Back then, I didn't un- really understand it. it. DHA was something new. I wasn't... DHEA or DHA? No, DHA, DHA. which is the uh, one of the most uh, important fatty acids in fish oil. Right. So it's an omega-3 fat. But it turns out your brain is made up of about 30% DHA. Mm-hmm. And your brain is really basically... A, Fat machine. Bunch of fat, right? <laughs> and so DHA influences your IQ. And so you look at basic diets today. I mean, I talk to friends of mine who are teachers, and we have kids that show up at school, and they give them their free breakfast, and it's just Pancakes sugary, syrup. sugary you know, cereal, white flour, right. sir, artificial syrup, sugary milk. I mean, it's just the worst diet in the world for your brain and for developing any part of your nervous system Mm -hmm. And at at an age when all these things are still developing. And so now they're in school getting it, but they probably had the same diet uh, when they're inside their mother. So, you know, because we're now experiencing a whole generation of people that grew up with with parents that were not aware of nutrition. They got away from traditional diets. They started eating more canned processed food, more fast food, just Mm -hmm. going out every single day for McDonald's or going out every single day for another fast food restaurant. And even though it fills you up with calories and it's cheap, the amount of nutrition in it is very low. Mm -hmm. So that old saying about Americans that were overfed and undernourished is completely true. true. And now it's, you know, with now we find out (laughs) that the... Uh, the government's misled everybody on their information for heart disease. And we've all been eating a low-fat diet for 30 to 40 years, which has created the obesity epidemic, created the diabetes epidemic. All this you know, stuff going on with heart disease is directly related to not eating um, quality food. So the good news about this is that we need to eat more fat. That's what The good news me. about it is that you can do something about it right now. I can and go start eat fat. eating. You can eat <laughs> fat. You can eat high quality food. You can avoid pesticides. You can move toward make this transition to organic foods mm-hmm. and start eating foods in more their natural state. Process it as the least amount that you can possibly mm-hmm. do, and avoid things that cause inflammation. So if you're avoiding the chemicals in the first place, mm-hmm. and you're you're filtering out your water. And then your body is actually getting um, a lot of natural food. You're going to start kicking in the processes in your own body that will detoxify certain things. And your whole system will change in a matter of months. And once you have that awareness and you take that awareness over to um, teaching new mothers to do this, and then those children are going to be exposed to different levels of nutrition um, during their whole life cycle. And that's going to make a difference in this IQ when they're born. So instead of tumbling toward idiocy, we can be climbing toward intelligence. You can be climbing toward... <laughs> or stepping, stepping genius. toward... You can be climbing toward genius. Toward genius. Why not? <laughs> you know, it's only a matter of a few points makes a huge difference in well, IQ. Well, sure. Yeah. But it's everything... I mean, I could tell the difference when I... If I eat poorly for a few days. If I just go off diet, I'm traveling, I don't have access to what I normally like to eat, I feel different. And so when I get back on a really great diet, I feel even, you know, much better. So if you can imagine... I've never seen you eat poorly. What exactly would make you eat poorly? Well, my definition of poorly might not be that bad. (laughs) Yeah, your definition of poorly is like, you know, people struggling to achieve the height of health food habits for 20 years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, you know, the reality is, is that it's, it really just comes down to awareness. You have to know that these things are happening. And a lot of us, we still have this idea 
most people you talk to still have this idea that there's some mythical figure at the government who oversees every piece of food sold in the United States and that they would never let you consume something that wasn't good for you. Or that there's enough laws or regulations in place to protect the environment. I mean, that's also a a large part of the awareness is not to assume that someone else is doing this work for you, right? Just like with your health. Don't assume that everyone else knows the best thing for your health. You need to research it. You need to research it. You know, why... why, How can a pesticide company introduce a pesticide to the marketplace and then 10 years later you go, oh, we studied that and it causes cancer? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you study it before you put it on the market? (laughs) Why do we get to be exposed to a billion pounds of that sprayed into the environment before somebody does a test? Right. And why do we only have testing from the people that make the chemical? Right. Yeah. None of these things make well, any so, sense. Well, so I mean, it boils down to really self-awareness. If you if you want to live a healthier life, if you want to live your the best health that you can have, given whatever circumstances you have, whether that's you know a genetic issue or something you've been exposed to, if you want to feel your best, um, you need to be aware of these things. Yeah, you do. And you have to educate yourself all the time about food. What I love about the organic food movement is that for the average person, especially if they're lazy about trying to understand everything there is to know about food, what they spray on it, what you're exposed to, all these things. Hey, the organic movement's great. You don't have to do anything. If you just buy organic food, (laughs) if you just buy organic food, higher quality food, And pay attention to things like grass-fed beef, all these different things that Mm -hmm. aren't allowed to have drugs shot into it or all these other things they do to to make a a piece of food to sell you. If you just do that, you don't have to worry about all these other things. Most of your job is done. You know, 90% of the things that you need to do are done. If you just go, I'm just only going to buy organic food and if I can't, I'm going to get it off that Clean 15 clean list 15 from the list. Environmental mm-hmm. Working Group. And if I stick to that, I'm 95% of the way down the road. I don't even have to think about all this other stuff. Now, what do you say to people who you know, are on a family budget? A lot of people have resistance to spending the money. They perceive that organic food is so much more expensive. And yet, they'll spend money on a lot of food that has actually no nutritional value whatsoever. So, but it's cheaper. But it's cheaper. Right? That's the whole. That's the whole attraction of the fast food industry. Our government has subsidized so much of the agricultural industry in this country that it's made fast food restaurants possible. They mm-hmm. wouldn't be possible if they actually had to pay the farmer a wage that he's supposed to get for the products that they're using. It's only because it's subsidized Mm -hmm. that that gets to them cheap enough and a lower grade of product to sell it to the public that cheap. So, but if you look at the fact that all that type of food creates a certain level of disease, diabetes, obesity, and that costs hundreds of billions of dollars, is that food really cheap? Is that food really saving anybody any money if down the road it's going to cost you more just because of your medical procedures? Well, it's thinking in a more holistic manner, really, which is what we're trying to introduce our listeners to. So you have to, and you know, I know a lot of people will go, they'll compare, you know, eating at fast food restaurants for a family meal to um, going to a store and buying organic. And it does seem to be more expensive in the beginning. But the reality is when you become more conscious and you're buying those things, you don't overbuy stuff. You tend to waste less food because it, you paid a decent price for it. And you tend to use your food differently. Everything changes over the first year that you're actually involved in these things. And then you realize after about three or four weeks of eating cleaner food that your taste buds change. And it's really hard to go back to poor quality of food. That's something nobody thinks about because, and that's again, is something else that lowers IQ. Most packaged food has flavor enhancers and additives to it that actually damage your brain. Things like MSG, aspartame, all these chemicals that are put into packaged food that make a low quality food product taste good actually cause brain damage. 
and over a period of time disrupt the neurons in your brain so much that you can lead to having memory issues later on in life. And so once you quit eating those things, though, it takes at least three weeks for it to disappear off your tongue. Yeah, that's right. You're really so used to t- that taste that nothing tastes good to you anymore unless it has MSG in it. Mm-hmm. And so there's about a three to four week period you go through and then all of a sudden one day you eat something and you go, wow, is that what that tastes like? Right, to refine your palate, yeah. Yeah, it's a completely different experience. But So we have pesticides, we have fluoride in the water, we have aluminum in the water, we have mercury in our teeth, you have MSG and aspartame in your food. It's just an ongoing cycle of exposure to all of these things combined with poor nutrition. But the way out of that... The way out of that is through upping your nutrition, eating organically, and then supplementing some things that everybody actually needs in their diet. So people can really take total control of, of at least what they're choosing to spend their money on and what they're choosing to put in their body as far as its um, exposure to chemicals and pesticides as oh, best we you have can. A, we have total control over all those things. There's options at every store you go to, but you've got to make the first step to actually be the person that acknowledges what's going on or sees what's going on and take the step to change that. Because your child that maybe you don't have yet could be the one that breaks that trend and they actually have an uptick in their IQ based on the amount of nutrition that you had and how you actually fed yourself during that whole pregnancy. All right, so nutrition is really key here. Awareness about what you're shopping for, what you're putting in your body. How can people get um, better nutrition outside of food? Um, Let's talk about what some of the products that you make, how those might be helpful. Well, you have to supplement, in my opinion. Supplement with what? With nutritional products. You have to either supplement with a multivitamin, something specific, in this case for your brain, you have to do something for basic stressors, which increase inflammation in your brain. You know, you combine inflammation in your brain from stressors with really poor nutrition and lifelong nutritional deficiencies. Then you have a recipe for really brain damage down the road. And so there's basic things and you know, I thought about this when I put together Tian Chi. And this mm-hmm. is the reason why I change that formula every couple of years because new research comes out. Mm-hmm. There's just basic things you have to have. Like what? Now, well, we covered DHA. You couldn't put DHA in a product like Tian Chi because a raspberry fish drink just doesn't <laughs> Raspberry appeal. fish drink. Doesn't Did we try that? I thought I tried one of those. It's just not <laughs> I didn't go over well. Everybody. And, you know, <laughs> DHA is an oil. And so, uh, but there's other basic things that I have in it that you absolutely have to have to maintain healthy neurons in your brain. Like what? And one of them is choline. Something like 75 to 90% of the people in America are choline deficient. So they don't get enough choline to not only drive acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter responsible for laying down and retrieving memories. Mm -hmm. It's responsible for how fast your brain processes information. Mm -hmm. But it's also um, choline is responsible for helping you to maintain myelin sheath, which is the protective coating of your neurons. You can't You know, there's all this talk about how we can generate new neurons in your brain. You can't do that without the basic nutrition that it requires to do those things. You know, they can talk all they want about exercising your brain, but there's no fuel there or no substance to make new neurons. (laughs) It's not going to happen. For a moment, I just thought you were saying you can't exercise your brain if there's no substance in it. If there's no substance there to actually produce those neurons and that takes things like niacin panathetic acid it takes methylfolate which is a special form of folic acid Mm -hmm. it takes vitamin b12 in a methylcobalamin form those two methyl uh, forms of those vitamins 
You have to have them or your nervous system is just not healthy. You cannot produce healthy nerves or maintain healthy nerves without those two forms of B vitamins. And are some of those things in TNG? Well, all of those things are oh, in okay. TNG. So you, that's so you're that's why I put it in there. This is why I have that formula mix for your brain added to the herbs. Right. So your formula of TNG has what's called nutraceuticals. And this is what you're nutrients, talking about? Nutrients designed to feed and maintain okay. your brain. So to maintain the speed by which you process information and to have the nutrients there to be able to repair your nervous system and to actually build healthy nerves. So, right. so you're going through the process of, say, lifting weights, which is good for neuroplasticity, the ability to grow new neurons in your mm-hmm. brain. Or you're studying something new like a language or just anything new that makes your, you flex your mm-hmm. brain muscles, so to speak. Um, all those things, if you're doing it, you actually have the nutrition there to pair up with that that allows your brain to go through the process of regeneration and, in, and through growth. And so that's what's missing for most people because they just don't have basic nutrients. Right. So climbing that stairway to intelligence or better intelligence or better better brain function, it's not just getting rid of the toxins in your environment or managing the toxins in your environment as best you can. It's also supplementing. It's really having that holistic approach by putting something in your body that your body wants desperately. That your body wants. Like Tian Chi. And here's the funny thing. The funny thing about it is, is that The detox processes in your body that uh, is part of what you're called liver phase one and two, liver detox. All those phases of where you bind with a carcinogen, say a pesticide or something that's in your food, and you render it harmless and then flush it out of your body. um, A lot of those processes are run by the very same things that you need to maintain your brain. If you don't have the methylfolate and the methylcobalamin to, and you don't have those basic nutrients, you know, choline to keep your liver in healthy function and all these different things all at the same time, your body can't even run the system by which it protects itself. So you're not only deficient in what you need to make new neurons and to continually be regrowing and regenerating you don't have the basic nutrients to protect yourself from toxins that make it into your system so for someone that is new to this idea of holistic eating or um, people that have been doing it for a long time but want to so to speak step up their game right what what is what you recommend the most for people to um, do I mean I assume doing something like taking tea on chi on a regular basis that's going to change your life right off the bat right so basically let's say you're a, you're a beginner to the whole movement and you want to improve your health you want to in fact you want to make an effort to avoid toxins improve your health eat a diet that's just better for you all around first off look at when you go into a grocery store, just go to the produce section. Buy most of your food there. <laughs> you can go to the, if you, uh, if you like meat, you can go to the meat section. Almost every major grocery store now in America has healthier choices of meat mm-hmm. and healthier choices of fish. Stay away from farm-raised fish. Stay away from grain-fed things, animals. Uh, there's healthier choices there. Buy organic produce. Now you've made a major leap in your diet. Mm -hmm. And that's the first step everybody should do. They should be drinking cleaner water. If you're someone who's already buying organic food and you're drinking clean water and you want to boot up some more, you got to look into nutritional products. You have to do something about the, the lack of nutrition. And everybody has a weak point nutritionally. You have to figure out what that is. But almost everybody can do something to improve brain function. Because most people, like say with the folic acid I put in Tian Chi, it's mm-hmm. called methylfolate. Half of the people in the country have a genetic disorder that doesn't allow them to absorb folic acid from food. Half of the people? Half of the people. It's half of the people worldwide have <sighs> this genetic variance that does not allow them to process the type of folic acid that we've added to the food supply. In fact, if you're one of those people, then that folic acid is actually toxic. This is why folic acid was once associated with 
colon cancer. Because in the form that it's in, if you can't transform it back to an active form, it's just like taking something that's oxidated. And so it's harmful to you. And so if you have that simple thing in your diet, you're now having a huge leap in how your nervous system works. I've given that single nutrient to different people, and they were just amazed the very first time they took it. And they want to know what that was about. Well, it had to be because they were one of those people that was had that genetic variance right. where they just couldn't process that, fully gas. Is that why sometimes when people take Tian Chi for the first time, there are some people that just fly with it. I mean, they take it and the whole world is sparkly and different for them. And other people are like, yeah, I feel good. I have sustained energy, but they don't have that. I'll call it a high for lack of a better well, word. That is that is due to one, nutritionally, sometimes they're so deficient and most people are really deficient in the nutrients especially the brain nutrients i put in tng the other thing is is that they may be feeling like that because they're so stressed out they've never actually had their nervous system relax enough so that all their energy circulates in their Mm -hmm. body and it's it's quite a feeling yeah it is quite a feeling i mean that's why people like taking it first thing in the morning but if you feel like you're in the pit of despair, <laughs> you're, you're tumbling toward total idiocy, <laughs> and you'd like to be climbing toward intelligence, uh, it's easier than you think. You just really have to clean up your diet, you know, take some really good nutritional products, and notice within the first 30 days how different you can feel. It's almost like your entire system does a reboot within the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. And it usually takes that long. You'll feel different within a couple days and then within a week. And then that 30-day mark, you're just going, wow, I probably just can't go back. This has been a great podcast. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. This has been Laura Shakti. And Roger Drummer. So if you like this, tune into our other podcast at herbworks.com. 